Coming up on Around San Diego, criminals are targeting the homes of those who have already been impacted by January's floods. Those details ahead. And a stretch of highway in Encinitas has cyclists concerned about safety. Why they say the new so-called protective barriers are actually making it worse. Plus, just ahead of spring break, measles is becoming a concern across the country and overseas. Our Abby Black shares how you can keep you and your family safe. Thanks so much for joining us as we take you around San Diego. I'm CBS 8's Jenny Day. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. We do begin in southeast San Diego, where victims of January's historic flooding are now dealing with yet another problem. Burglars are targeting their homes as residents try to put their lives back together. CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez checks in with police and shares what residents are saying. Residents have growing concerns that their vacant homes will be broken into. And now with repairs underway, they're worried their tools or supplies will be stolen. This used to be the kitchen. This is Anna's family's home in Shelltown. They suffered a lot of damage. It was five feet inside the house. So I mean, there's there's all the all the drywall had to be removed all of the floor. She and her sister are doing many of the repairs themselves. We've been doing it because it has to be done. Um, my dad, he's 70, so, you know, I just can't stand to see him, you know, here working. They faced challenge after challenge. We've been broken into twice already. She says the thieves stole expensive tools and blowers being used to dry up the water. It's not right, you know, you kind of think, you know, what kind of person would do something like that to, you know, somebody who's already going through so much. People living on Birch Street near the South Crest Trails Park are also concerned. Before the park, was like, there was a lot of people gathering there, and then now they know the houses are empty, so I think that's when they can break into the houses. Right now, we don't have a real fence up, so we're pretty concerned that people still can come in our yard and stuff like that and grab our stuff. I reached out to San Diego police, who says officers have responded to burglaries in the flood areas, and that detectives are investigating. The department says officers are making extra patrols and have since the flooding happened. Let's see it. After experiencing two break-ins, Anna would like to see more done. I tell them there's nobody staying in these houses, um, and you guys are aware of that. So you guys should be patrolling, and it's me and, and my sister and neighbors who've been taking matter, matters into our hands and driving down here middle of the night just to make sure nobody's breaking in. For her and many others, repairs will last months, if not longer. Some parts of the floor had to be taken out completely. Um, we're hoping that it dries out, um, but we don't 100% know if it's even salvageable. Jasmine Ramirez, CBS 8. Yeah, come on, San Diego, we can do better, right? Well, now to the latest Super Tuesday election results. Prop 1 officially passed this week. The state measure is centered around a $6.4 billion bond to update mental health systems for the first time in 20 years and tackle the homelessness crisis. It imposes a strict requirement on counties when it comes to spending. The measure won by just more than 21,000 votes. For more election results, go to cbs8.com slash elections. And you know it, CBS CBS 8 is working for you to get to the bottom of water billing problems in the city of San Diego. We continue to receive emails from customers whose bills have been suspended. CBS 8's David Godfordson spoke to neighbors in Mission Hills who believe the city isn't being honest with the public. The meter is right here. It's been four months since Mission Hills homeowner Ken Pirelli got a notice in the mail that his water bills were being withheld, pending an investigation by the city of San Diego into, quote, abnormal water usage. The first reaction is to panic that you have a leak under a slab and that you're going to be facing a uh, expensive uh, plumbing repair bill. Ken called a plumber and checked for water leaks, but nothing seemed abnormal. I investigated the abnormal reading, and you can see that there's dirt in front of the meter. So the abnormal reading is that there was no reading taken, I believe. When Ken went on next door, he found dozens of similar complaints by neighbors. Well, between March of 2023 and September of 2023, I did not receive a bill. Neighbor Patty Ducey Brooks's water bill is now more than $2,400 
after a city investigation found problems with her water meter. She believes the city is trying to charge her too much, so she refused to pay. How do you charge somebody when you have no evidence that the water was even used? CBS 8 has been working for you investigating water billing problems for more than a year. The city is now notifying people when their water bills are being withheld. And last month, the city's public utilities director told CBS 8 he was working to reduce the number of withheld bills, which amount to more than 24,000 customers. I don't believe that the underlying problem is 24,000 people with excess water usage. I think that's being used as a shield to mask the real problem. Now the city tells me 98% of water bills are sent to customers on time, and the city says they have recently hired 10 new customer service workers who will begin in April and May. If you want more information, go to CBS8.com. In Kearney Mesa, David Goffertson, CBS8. David, thank you. And many Californians could soon be required to cut back on their water use, but some question if it will go far enough. In a marathon eight hour workshop, the state's water board gave the public a chance to weigh in on its new strategy to increase water supply statewide to protect against future drought conditions. Each water supplier would be required to adopt a water use budget specific to their individual community. While ongoing conservation is encouraged, San Diego would not be significantly impacted because we have achieved the conservation savings needed. We've achieved about a 50% reduction in per person use. So what the state through their proposed regulation is trying to do is implement something similar to that statewide. Yeah, keep it up. So public comment on these new regulations will continue through Wednesday with the state water board likely voting in July. And many viewers are asking why San Diego City leaders are pushing for a sales tax increase to fix our roads when California's high gas taxes are supposed to go toward improving them. We once again are working for you to answer that. Looking over the city's latest proposed budget for its share of the gas tax, we found it does fund street repairs, but also maintenance for street lights, traffic signals, traffic signs, and markings. Mayor Todd Gloria says raising our sales tax 1% will pay for better roads and other things like an upgrade to our storm drain system. But there is some skepticism. I think where people are concerned, people are challenged is we're not seeing performance out of the city. We can't even read water meters, right? Yeah, 1% sales tax increase would add an estimated $400 million a year to San Diego's general fund. If the city council votes to put the tax on the ballot, voters will have their say this November. Well, now to a fatal bike crash in Encinitas last weekend that has some cyclists calling for change. They say the protected bike lanes along Highway 101 are actually hurting cyclists. Around midnight on Sunday, 48-year-old cyclist Ryan Curry was found dead in one of those bike lanes. Sheriff's deputies say he wasn't wearing a helmet and it doesn't appear that a vehicle was involved. A cycling advocate and two-time Olympian, Sean Wallace, spoke to CBS 8 and says this stretch of Highway 101 used to be a favorite for many cyclists, but ever since the city installed what are supposed to be protective barriers separating cars and bikes, he says there have been problems, including cyclists crashing into those wheel stops. At any time you put an immovable object right next to a bike lane, a, a highly used uh, active bike lane, some cyclists are going to end up crashing into them. Uh, yes, our cameras captured some of those issues that Wallace told us about. Cyclists swerving around pedestrians while also swerving around wheel stops. We reached out to the mayor's office for comment, have not yet heard back. Well, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention issued a health alert for Americans traveling internationally for spring break. This after 58 cases of the measles have been reported in the U.S., including one in San Diego County, and the number is growing around the world. Almost all of the cases were connected to travel outside of the U.S. The CDC has updated guidelines now recommending Americans check in with their doctors six weeks before international travel. CBS 8's Abby Black has more on how to stay safe if you plan on taking a trip abroad. 
Children across the world are affected by the measles outbreak. And before you take off this spring break, whether it be within the state, across the country, or internationally, doctors at Rady Children's Hospital want to make sure that children are vaccinated against the measles. 58 measles cases in the U.S. this year. That's the same amount for all of 2023. The main thing with measles is that it's really contagious. So if somebody goes into a room with 100 people and they're not immune to measles, 90 of those people will get measles. Dr. Edmund Milder is a pediatric infectious disease specialist at Rady Children's Hospital in UC San Diego. Last month, San Diego County faced its first and only reported measles case this year. It involved a one-year-old girl who traveled internationally and brought the airborne virus back to the U.S. Anywhere you gather and have a lot of people, you're just going to increase your risk, especially with measles, where you don't have to be, you know, within that three to six feet to get exposed because it can travel through the air. Today, the CDC issued a health advisory on travel after an increase in global and domestic measles cases. The CDC reports that 58 measles cases are in 17 states and 93 percent are linked to international travel and most are children one year and older who are not vaccinated. They encourage children six months and older to be current on their measles, mumps and rubella or MMR vaccine. People get a cough, congestion, red eyes, conjunctivitis and then fever and eventually they'll get a rash that usually starts on the face, uh, behind the ears, and then spreads down the rest of the body. Measles was eliminated in the U.S. in 2000. Then in 2014, Disneyland had an outbreak, and five years later, there were 207,000 deaths worldwide, which was the worst outbreak since 1992. Most kids will then be able to fight it off and make a recovery, but the risk is that some kids could have inflammation of their brain and some kids can die from the infection. California has strict vaccine exemption laws and the MMR vaccine is required to attend public schools. Still, nationwide vaccine rates have dropped since COVID. Before you take off by air or car this spring, Dr. Milder says make sure that you're updated on your vaccines to protect those who can't get vaccinated, which are babies younger than six months and immunocompromised. We can protect them by all the rest of us staying immune and not allowing the virus to spread. Abby Black, CBS 8. Yeah, on Tuesday, dozens of health care workers and community members in the South Bay demanded Scripps Mercy reverse its decision to close down its maternity ward. They announced last month the department will be consolidated with Scripps Mercy in Hillcrest. The hospital said this consolidation is necessary to alleviate the rising numbers of patients in the emergency room in Chula Vista. Many critics say the patients in the South Bay are often from lower income communities and many rely on public transportation, making it more difficult. The hospital will still offer emergency obstetric services. Well, the man who federal officials say was the mastermind behind a commercial sex trafficking ring made his first court appearance on Tuesday after being extradited back to the U.S. Michael Pratt pleaded not guilty to sex trafficking charges in a San Diego federal courtroom. Officials say Pratt, the owner of the website Girls Do Porn, tricked young women and at least one minor to appear in pornographic videos by luring them through modeling job ads posted on Craigslist and other websites. Most most of the videos were made here in San Diego. Pratt was first charged back in 2019 with sex trafficking crimes and was an international fugitive until his arrest in Spain in 2022. Pratt's right hand man and cameraman Matthew Wolf was also sentenced to 14 years in prison. Wolf oversaw the company finances and personally filmed more than 100 of those videos for the site. Now to a battle along the border over makeshift shelters for migrants. They were built by John Schultz and others around Hakumba Hot Springs as a shelter from the elements for migrants waiting to be taken to the Border Patrol to a detention facility. Schultz says the federal government hired a demolition crew to tear them down. It first happened in February. Two days later after that, on March the 2nd, a group of civilians showed up and destroyed them. A second time we filed a report to the sheriff. Uh, he said that uh, the deputy would call us back, but that never happened. Yeah, each time the shelters are destroyed, Schultz and others keep rebuilding them and they say they will continue to do so. Whether you agree with them coming in or not, I don't think anyone can agree that it's a good idea to put them through all of this. Yeah, the sheriff's department says it is actively investigating the situation. 
Still ahead, spring is here and it can bring some great weather, but also lots of allergies. Our Brian White shares how you can keep yourself healthy this season next. Welcome back. Tuesday night marked the official start of spring and already this year, though, allergy season is setting records. CBS 8's Brian White shows us some of the surprising allergy aggravators that might be making allergies worse without you even realizing it. According to the USA National Phenology Network, spring pollen season is getting longer and more intense. And with that, more allergies. Itchy eyes, itchy nose, scratchy throat, cough even, right? Sometimes trouble breathing even, right? So sometimes people come in, they don't know, oh, is this just allergies or am I getting a cold? Joshua Sugai is a physician assistant at AFC Urgent Care in Point Loma. He says they're seeing an influx of patients seeking relief from their allergies. What I usually prescribe them is usually nasal spray or antihistamine during the season just to kind of help with their symptoms. As far as aggravating your allergies, there's a few unexpected culprits that can make them worse, like wearing contact lenses. Sometimes the pollen can get behind in between the contact lens and your eye, and so it can definitely cause some irritation. So definitely during like allergy season, we recommend just go for your, just wear your glasses. Another one, alcohol. For some people, it can amplify your allergy symptoms. People who have um, history of hay fever or allergic rhinitis, sometimes their allergies get worse if they drink alcohol. Another culprit, some common house plants. Sap allergens diffusing into the air can trigger symptoms with ficus, yucca, ivy, palm, orchid, and fern varieties being the main offenders. And who'd have thought, indoor swimming. If you're swimming and chlorine can definitely trigger some allergic responses or irritation in the airway, right? Especially if it's poor ventilation. So try to opt out swimming outside or salt water. And some fragrance foes like scented candles, aerosols, and potpourri might smell nice, but they can unleash volatile organic compounds or VOCs into the air. Avoiding all of these things can significantly reduce allergy symptoms, and Sugai says there's testing available to find out exactly what you're allergic to. There's blood tests, um, there's skin tests that you can do, so you would see an allergist to do those testing, and they can tailor you know, a treatment plan for you. I'm Brian White for CBS 8. Good tips, Brian. Thanks. Coming up, Rady Children's is hoping to build a canine therapy program to help bring comfort to kids in their care. Our Abby Black is working for kids and has that story. Uh, well, Rady Children's Hospital is ranked one of the top 10 children's hospitals in the country, providing top-notch care to more than 270,000 young patients each year. But unlike other children's hospitals, Rady Children's does not have a professional canine therapy program, but they are working on it and could use your help. CBS aides Abby Black explains how working for kids will make a world of difference. The hospital can be a scary place for pediatric patients. CBS 8 and Rady Children's Hospital are working for kids. They need your support for a new medically trained canine therapy program. Rady Children's Hospital is looking for its top docs. Oh my gosh, I can't even, I'm like so beyond excited. Taylor Keatley is the Child Life Supervisor at Rady Children's Hospital and wants to add three doctors to her team as part of the professional canine therapy program. So these medical dogs that are going to come into our hospital are specifically trained, bred, to be able to work with these patients and families that our canine volunteers are not able to. These medically trained canines are much more involved than the wonderful and cuddly volunteer therapy dogs. Give her a hug, princess. The certified medical canines will work full time with a child life specialist and make their rounds by providing a warmth and calmness during new diagnosis, education, a procedure, or they'll be there for bereavement support. <laughs> They're able to do things such as putting an anesthesia mask on a, their face to help normalize that experience for that child. They're able to put band-aids on their fur. They're able to dress them up in medical coats. Child life specialists play a big role in breaking down the barriers and the canines can help them bridge the gap between doctors, patients and parents. So we're really going to be able to meet that child where they are and be able to build that trust, build that rapport, and help them get out of hopefully the hospital sooner. Rady Children's wants to continue its best practices and join other children's hospitals by integrating canine therapy into a child's medical plan. 
If you can know that you get to greet a dog and have a dog present with you for one of your dialysis treatments, this might change the course of how your treatment goes. This might help you want to show up. It might be less of a battle for mom to get you in the car that day. Alex Loker is the vice president of philanthropy at Rady Children's and says the canines will go through an intense two to three year training for a hospital setting. The training that these dogs will have is remarkable. It's like sending dogs to medical school. The dogs are matched with a child life specialist who's gone through handler training and will live together. All of this and maintaining the program is expensive and not covered by insurance. We really need the community support to make this happen. Programs like this are funded solely through donations. CBS 8 is a proud partner in working for kids to help pediatric patients have a more positive experience and allow kids to be kids in the hospital. We are so excited that CBS 8 will be championing this cause with us at Rady Children's. It's important that we have the very best patient experience for our kiddos that come here in San Diego. This canine prescription can be just what the doctor ordered. Everything that we encompass, we want to meet their psychosocial needs as well as their emotional needs as child life specialists. This companion, this medical dog, is going to be one of our best friends to do this. Working for kids, Abby Black, CBS 8. Ugh, warms my heart. Again, CBS 8 is a proud partner with Rady Children's Hospital to help make this happen. We will have a give a thon on June 5th, but you can donate now. To learn more, go to cbs8.com slash community. That'll do it for us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for staying informed. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day. Take care.